Hey folks, welcome back. This is going to be a follow-up video to the previous video I did that I uploaded a couple days ago on my oil pressure switch, uh, which I was hoping was going to fix my low oil pressure issue. Uh, if you remember, my gauge was fluctuating very sporadically. The driver information center was showing stop engine, low oil pressure, all those kinds of things. It got me really nervous. After some research online, um, I came to the conclusion that it was possibly, and I say possibly, and I'll explain in a minute, uh, that possibly that oil pressure switch was the culprit. So we replaced that oil pressure switch, um, actually wound up doing an oil filter, uh, oil and filter change after that. Um, took it for a test drive, went out the following day, drove it to work about 30 minutes, and then I got very close to work, about 20 miles away uh, from the house here, and came to a stop at a stoplight, and the oil pressure gauge started fluctuating again. It went from normal, about 40 on the gauge, all the way down to zero, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, one interesting thing I found was that if I shut the engine off, just for a few seconds while idling, uh, go ahead and shut the engine off, wait just a couple seconds, turn it back on, the oil pressure seemed to be fine. And I was kind of hopeful that it may just be a computer issue, an electrical issue, uh, but the following day after that, the same thing happened. So, my next step is going to be to actually check the oil pressure with a manual pressure gauge. This is a Matco 0 to 400 PSI, which is a little bit much for this application. The oil pressure on these 4.2 liters at idle, I'm sorry, at about 1200 RPMs should be around 12 PSI, and at about 10 PSI, around 1000 RPMs. So this gauge, I don't know if you can see that too well. This gauge is a 0 to 400 PSI gauge. Hopefully down in the lower range it's graduated enough that I'll be able to read, read the gauge pretty well. But if not, I've got another 0 to 30 PSI gauge that I'll try and swap out. Uh, what I'm going to need to attach this gauge to the motor, um, and I'll show you that process here in just a minute, uh, but this gauge has a 1 8 inch NPT fitting on the end. The, uh, the the plug on the block that you'll see in just a minute, which is on the front side of the engine, just forward of the oil pressure switch, is a M16 by 1.5 thread uh, that I had to get this adapter. Uh, picked this up off of Amazon. I'll have a link in the description below. This is a autometer uh, metric adapter, part number 2268 then I'm just going to attach the gauge to the adapter and then we'll screw that into the block and then this is about a six foot piece of hose so I'll have enough to come up out of the engine and hopefully bring it into the in, inside the car where I can read it you know do some actual field testing uh, while the engine is running so let's get started I'll show you how I hook this up and we'll go from there Okay, here is the plug on the front of the oil filter, and this is going to be the plug that I'm going to remove to install the gauge. And I've got, uh, what is this, my 8mm Allen wrench in that plug to remove it. And I'm just going to take the plug out and put the gauge in. And you can see just to the left of that plug is the oil pressure switch. And then obviously just down below is the oil filter. What I did to make this a little easier to access from the top is I removed the tensioner pulley. There's the mounting point right there. And that way I can get to it from the top of the engine instead of having to crawl around on the ground and fish my way up like I did with the oil pressure switch. Okay, I've got the adapter on and I've got the gauge hooked up to that. The plug that was in the engine block was a little tricky to get out. I just had to use a little little persuasion. I just used a socket extension attached to my 8mm wrench and I, I was able to back it out no problem. Uh, I've just got to hook up the belt tensioner now and then get the car started and we'll check the pressures. <laughs> 
All right, I've got the pressure gauge hooked up, and I've got the idler pulley assembly put back on. You can see everything hooked up there. Let me show you how I ran this. So I ran it up. I zip-tied it to the screw holding the air box on. I ran it underneath the air box, up next to the washer bottle, the antifreeze bottle, underneath that cross member, and then just underneath the rear of the hood. And I've got it set up just temporarily. I've got it clamped to the antenna there just so we can get a picture of, of when I start the engine up. So that's how that went. It was a little difficult, as I said, to get the plug out of the engine block. But once I got that out, um, I was able to put the adapter in first. And I put some Teflon tape on the adapter. And then I screwed in the hose to the adapter, tightened that down, and snaked it underneath all the components here as I've shown. So let's get it started up and see what we got. All right, and here's how I did the final piping of that hose. I ran it, came out from underneath the hood, and I actually took out this body panel bolt just enough so I could pull the body panel back to get the hose in between the weather stripping and the quarter panel itself. And then I just routed it into the car, and it's gonna sit on the dash where I'm gonna try and mount it uh, in such a way that I can see it from the driver's seat. Okay, here's what I figured out for the time being. This is just a temporary setup. I've got a cheap plastic clamp holding the gauge vertical in such a way that I can see it from the driver's seat. I can lean it over far enough and read the gauge when the gauge on the dashboard starts acting up. So here's some footage of that actually happening. Today is Tuesday morning. I took a different route to work today. So we're going to see if the oil pressure gauge is acting up at about the same spot where it did uh, about a week or so ago. So I'm coming up to the light here in just a few minutes and we'll have a check on the gauge. So there we go. It's starting to act up again. And there's a look at the actual pressure. And here we go, green light. This is about after 25 minutes of driving. Here's another look. I've, I'm parked in the parking lot now here at the office and just trying to get a steady read on the gauge pressure here. Again, it's, I apologize for how difficult it is to read the gauge, the manual gauge, <clears throat> but it's still acting up on the dashboard as you can see. But so far, 
Okay, there it goes. I was about to say, so far it hasn't told me to stop the engine yet. You know, I'm not seeing the fluctuation on the manual gauge that we're seeing on the dashboard. Looks like it's bouncing around just a little bit. It's obviously below 14, 12 PSI. Again, it's hard to read. All right, so there it is. Yesterday, Monday, it didn't do this on the way in. Um, today, Tuesday, it did do it. It's about 28 degrees right now, according to my car. And I guess I'm back to the drawing board. Well, there it is. That's what happens when my oil pressure gets low. It seems that the oil pressure on the manual gauge is in agreement with what's on the dashboard but since that gauge is a 0 to 400 psi and the graduations are pretty small uh, down at the low end I've got one more thing I want to try I ordered today from eBay a, another Matco gauge it's a 0 to 100 psi gauge that I'm gonna hook up to this one um, just to double check see what it's really doing down at the low end but the specification on the motor is a minimum 12 PSI at 1200 RPMs, which, you know, just roughly gauging that gauge, it seems that it's getting down in that low, low range. So I'm, I'm a little concerned right now. Um, I'm going to try the second gauge, the, the lower graduated gauge, 0 to 100 PSI. And then I'm also going to try to flush my engine. And I was watching some videos last night and had some ideas about how to do it. I think what I wound up deciding to do is I'm going to flush the engine with kerosene. I've never done that before, so we'll see how that goes. See if that loosens up any of the sludge, you know, unclogs any of the ports inside the inside the block. Um, what my hope is, what my hope is, is that the pickup screen on the pickup tube is clogged. Uh, but not clogged enough to where I can't clean it. So I'm hoping that that kerosene cleanse uh, will clean off some sludge on that pickup tube, which will, you know, allow for better oil pressure, more more normal oil pressure. Uh, the, I guess the third thing I'm going to look at, uh, this was a suggestion that my brother-in-law had, was to look at the oil filter bypass valve, which is screwed in just above the oil filter. Uh, so I'm going to take a look at that as well this weekend. So that's what I've got. Oil pressure lights still acting up after I drive about 25 minutes or so. And we'll see what happens next. Stay tuned.